Hey guys, Greg with MOA Custom Firearms. I uh, wanted to just bring you up to speed on what we're doing today. We're going to have a, uh, a Glock 35 that we're going to turn into a, uh, a limited class race gun. And I'm going to show you a few things along the way. Uh, it's not a Glock disassembly video. There's a million of those on YouTube, so we're not going to tell you, uh, you know, all the different ways to disassemble it. We'll go through that quickly as we're doing it. But just more so of you know what are we going to do to something like a, a Glock 35 to um, to make it race ready for uh, for say limited major or um, this is, which is what we're going to be building today is a limited major gun. So uh, stick around. I'm going to show you a few products. Going to talk about um, different manufacturers and what you can kind of expect out of them, and uh, and we'll go from there. This is going to be pretty much a competition level build. This would not be suitable for a carry gun just because of how light the trigger is going to be when we're finished and most of my customers uh, will will tell you that I'm a big proponent of not doing trigger jobs on carry guns because it really just uh, uh, adds to the propensity for an accidental discharge or, or something along those lines so that again this is competition level and um, we're going to get started on breaking that down and going through it okay enjoy the video okay you guys so <clears throat> to get started on some of the components that are out there and what we're going to do today um, we'll, we'll talk about a few things uh, one of the things the customer uh, bought this Glock 35 used uh, online and got a really good deal on it with a lot of extra mags so he's you know he's getting it set up for like we said uh, a, a limited class gun meaning it's going to be real high capacity a couple of things had already been done to the gun but we'll show you some of the parts anyway that we happen to have here in stock uh, so it's going to save the time and, and cost of him actually doing that. Uh, one of the big things for the competition shooters is these, uh, these uh, extended magazine releases to make a little faster, um, a little bit faster uh, reloads and, um, and mag changes. Uh, these are pretty easy to change out, probably actually the most difficult thing on a Glock and it's really pretty simple. These are south of $10 uh, when you get those from your retailer. Um, another thing that, that, I always kind of, uh, that I always kind of laugh about is the, uh, the, uh, the $30 Glock trigger job I call it. These are uh, um, connectors, uh, three pound connector, three and a half pound connector. Uh, is what they're marketed as, uh, obviously made by Ghost. Uh, I think these retail for around $15 and they've got a, a slightly changed geometry for the trigger bar to engage the sear. And so, um, you know, a lot of people will do that. Yeah, they'll definitely lighten the trigger down. They really don't do anything for pre-travel, over-travel, and they're not generally as crisp as if you do something uh, just, a, just a little bit higher end. So we're not going to be using those parts. Uh, Ghost also makes an extended slide stop, which has already been put on this gun. So, uh, so that's already on there. Saved a little bit of cost there. But what we're going to be doing primarily is uh, a lot of uh, internal work. One of the best things out there, or probably the best thing out there for Glocks, um, is this uh, Zev Ultimate Fulcrum Trigger Kit uh, that, is, that is sold. Um, this is fully adjustable for pre-travel and over-travel. Uh, the kit comes with a separate connector other than what's, what's shown here that's designed strictly for competition. Uh, it, it comes with uh, new striker springs, uh, striker safety, lighter spring for that. And uh, these retail, this kit retails for around $250. Uh, so you're going to spend a little bit of money, but, but definitely in comparison to what I, like I said, what I call the $30 Glock trigger job. This is uh, this is far, far, far superior. And the folks out at Zev really, uh, really just hit a home run when they came up with this. They have some some drop-in kits that are uh, that are much better. That might be a little better for a daily carry, but this is going to be strictly competition only for this Ultimate Fulcrum trigger kit. Another thing that Zev came out with this year. This is new for 2017. We're going to try it out. Is this Pro Plus Magwell? Um, it's a little more streamlined than some of the magwells that they've made in the past. It's also lighter. Um, we were looking for a little more weight to help with recoil so that, so that our customer stays on target uh, when he's working through stages. But, um, but they quit doing the, uh, the heavier inserts. So we're going to kind of be stuck with this. It is aluminum. Um, it is really ergonomically cool looking. 
Uh, it looks like it's got a, a plenty big enough uh, funnel, so we're going to uh, we're going to install that. Also, a lot of times with Glocks, people who are used to shooting 1911 style pistols will get slide bite right in the web of their hand, uh, where they're used to taking a really high grip on a gun, and the slide comes back and bites them, and and you know can can hurt and and gash them open a little bit. And so when we're talking about those those shooters that like that high grip, um, this is something that's just a small piece of plastic add-on that's going to be a beaver tail to help uh, help our customer get a higher grip on the gun, uh, which will help with with uh, uh, wrist recoil and as well as protect against that slide bite. And with him shooting limited class, we're going to be going with these Terran Tactical uh, TTI Firepower Plus uh, mag extensions which add a uh, five capacity to the 40 caliber six capacity if you're doing this on a nine millimeter uh, so this is going to enable him to uh, enable him to carry 20 rounds in each mag um, so fewer reloads uh, and so you know this will uh, this will improve time just by having that higher capacity the gun that we're going to be doing as I said it is a uh, Glock 35 it's clear and um, we're going to go ahead and get ready to start tearing this down. Uh, one of the things, as I said, they have already installed the extended mag release. And it's really not pronounced like in a 1911, but there is a uh, Ghost makes a, um, and there's a couple other companies, but they make a, a slightly extended uh, slide release. It's still not really in the way, but it is a nice little shelf there to get a thumb on if you are... Uh, uh, returning the gun to battery after after the mag is empty. Um, so other than that, the new sights have been put on it prior to us getting a hold of it. So other than that, this gun's pretty much stock other than these two pieces. And somebody got a Dremel and did some some Dremeling on the inside here to kind of make it a little bit uh, larger opening for mag changes. But we're going to improve upon that with our um, with our our Zev Pro Plus Magwell. And then we have uh, we have some some magazines for the uh, TTI Firepower Plus uh, mag extensions, but we're only going to show you one of those on camera. And so we'll go ahead, we'll reset everything, and get ready to start doing the assembly on this and making these parts changes. Okay, guys. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to just quickly get this uh, this Glock disassembled and um, and make sure that uh, this is. Uh, ready to take on these new components. We're going to be using for now factory barrel and a factory uh, guide rod. You can obviously, there are companies out there like ISMI who make um, guide rods that have uh, tail adjustable spring, not adjustable springs, but you can change the poundage on exactly what it is that you're looking for um, out of uh, recoil spring assembly. And, uh, and so we're going we're gonna to just kind of uh, leave the stock stuff in there for now. The customer uh, elected not to do a barrel and, uh, and that spring kit at this time. So we're, um, we're kind of just leaving those stock till he shoots them out. There we go. Sometimes the trigger pin and slide release can be a booger. great thing about these Glocks is the limited amount of tools, the simplicity. You know, 30 years ago Gaston Glock designed, over 30 years ago Gaston Glock designed these guns and they're relatively simple. I mean, you can, you can just about do everything disassembly wise on this gun with a 3 seconds inch punch. So we're going to hang on to some of this stuff. Some of this stuff will get, get reused. Some of this stuff won't. Uh, so let's go ahead and we'll start with the frame. We have our ultimate fulcrum trigger kit, so we're going to open that up. And it comes with, a, in addition to the, uh, the trigger, the trigger bar, the, the uh, trigger ejector with housing, it comes with a number of other components in there. And, uh, and we're going to go through those. It comes with a firing pin safety that is uh, lighter. It's highly polished and lighter. It comes with a, a skeletonized striker that's lighter. Uh, it comes with a two and a three pound uh, a striker spring. Uh, we're going to use the two pound because this is going to be a competition gun. 
and then it comes with what they call their their V4 race connector. Uh, it's a skeletonized connector with a slightly different geometry, uh, even than the one that comes on their kit. Uh, so you can see that's skeletonized and very nice, very slick polish on it. So the first thing we have to do is take out the connector or the disconnector that is. No, I guess it's a connector that's in there. You can just push that out with your punch, and we'll replace that with the V4 race connector. And gently put that back together, and our trigger. Oops, put it back together the right. 90 degrees off. There we go. Alright, so once that's back together, we can go ahead and just drop that right down in. Oh, let me show you this while I've got it apart. In the top of the trigger housing, there is a set screw there, which is for pre-travel, uh, whether you want more or less pre-travel on the gun and on the bottom there is a tiny set screw I think they're both the same size right there Let me get up here right there that adjusts your over travel um, so we're looking for a good pre-travel and uh, a quick reset and Zev really does a fantastic job on these um, on these kits when they make them to usually there's not any adjustment needed right from the factory on the um, on the pre-travel and over travel we may adjust this one out just a little bit uh, just because this is strictly a competition gun so we have the trigger assembly relatively back in here and then we just need to throw a couple of pins in Now, before we put the trigger housing with ejector pin in, remember we said that uh, we were going to do this beaver tail on it to give it a much higher grip. So now's the time to do that because it actually comes with an extended uh, trigger housing with ejector pin because of the additional width added. And this just slides into place like so. And it's a good good habit to to get uh, a good grip on it, and make sure because it will slide forward at times. And these are plastic. So you want to be careful and not hit them with a 16 ounce ball peen hammer. But just get it to catch, and then it's on. And they are. They are pretty solid when you get them on there and you can get a, like I said, it, that beaver tail adds just a, a higher grip to it. So our trigger, is, uh, our trigger is done in the frame part of it. So we will take the old trigger housing with ejector pin, put it over there, and we'll move on to the slide. The slide, one of the things we're going to definitely change out, like we said, we are going to put a new uh, striker safety in it and that comes from Zev with a lighter spring and it's very very highly polished uh, I'm not sure the material on this if it's steel or if they did a titanium on that I really don't remember off the top of my head but we're gonna put that in place the guide rod and then you'll see a lot of people will take these, turn them upside down to take the cups off of the spring. Which the big reason is because we just need this sleeve. Everything else is going to go away. We'll use our two pound spring. Again, competition only. And our skeletonized, this really cool skeletonized uh, striker.
we use our slide as a bit of a vice, I guess you would call it, or bench block. Put the cups back in position. I do not have watchmaker's hands. The sausage is getting in the way. And just a quick inspection to make sure that the cups are seated. They are. Now the one exception I've found on where you need a 330 seconds punch is putting the rear cover plate back together is much easier with a larger punch to push down that sleeve and then you can take your 330 seconds to depress the guide line. That's now reassembled. And goes off when you release the mm, that'll be doubles all day but that's not that's not good we need to adjust that so I'll make some adjustments and then we'll come back and show you the pre-travel and over travel okay so uh, off camera I went back in had to take it out a few times had to take the uh, ultimate fulcrum kit out a few times um, we were getting no reset on the trigger and it was from excess adjustment on the pre-travel as well as one of the big things we had to change we had to go if you remember we went to the two pound striker spring because we wanted this to be super light uh, you know competition gun we actually had to go back and put the three pound trigger spring in in order to uh, get the the trigger to reset the two pound spring was too light first time I'd ran into that with a Zev kit so essentially now we have this gun that if you'll watch the amount of pre-travel we do not have, once we depress the shoe, we have a little bit of pre-travel. However, our reset is nothing. I mean, it's just really minimal movement for reset. So that's going to be great for, uh, you know, for, for firing. Uh, your first shot will be a little more pull. Uh, Weight-wise, it's only 2 pounds, 10 ounces. Uh, so we got a great trigger out of the system. Uh, most of your factory Glocks are about five and a half pounds, so this is two pounds, ten ounces, so we've taken a whole lot of weight off the effort to pull the trigger on this gun. Um, so with that being said, let's continue on with some of the other things we're doing. We were going to do this uh, Zev Pro Plus Magwell, new for 2017 from Zev. They are aluminum. Um, like I said, it is much lighter weight than what they produced in the past. Um, so it is, it is uh, a lighter weight, but it's a nice big funnel. Um, would like to have a little more weight in there to help with that recoil, but you know, sometimes things go on the market and sometimes things come off the market. But that definitely made a difference uh, in some of the guns I've done in the past with these Zev kits in the 40 cal as to uh, the amount of felt recoil. Now this slips right over, and then of course there's a the uh, little set screw in the rear. We don't want to over tighten it. We don't want to crack the, the polymer frame. We're going to make sure it's good and snug. And now we have this nice big funnel to throw mags into. All right, so we've got a great setup there. Let's move on to increasing our magazine capacity. We said we were going to do the Terran Tactical TTI Fire, Firepower Plus uh, mag extensions. These are a pretty simple design. Uh, they come with an extra power, longer spring, and then of course the increased capacity base pad, which gives us a capacity of 20 rounds on the 40 caliber. Now they're held in place by this little metal pin that you can see right there, and that pin uh, has tension on it. It's just a friction lock. On this, there's a small screw right here on the side that provides that friction. So if those start loosening up, you can just tighten that down. Take our, uh, our Glock mag apart. Okay. 
and keep your hand over it because you're going to have the floor plate and the spring come out. We will reuse the follower. One of the differences with the Terran Tactical is the, uh, is the use of the factory follower. Snaps right in. And the trick with these <coughs> is you're not going to reuse this floor plate catch that's in the factory mag. So we're going to just have to hold this down with a finger. And slide this plate over. And it requires a little bit of manipulation and work to seat that. And then sometimes you'll have exactly that. You'll have a little bit of the spring. There you hear it snap into place. Now we can just That'll be a little easier. Put that pin to, to pass. There we go. Now that pin locks the base plate onto the magazine so it won't come off during competition. All right. So now we've uh, we've pretty much completed what we're going to do to this gun. And this is kind of our finished product. Uh, we have an additional five rounds in the magazine, 20 round capacity. Let's make sure our slide lock works. It does. Our trigger. With very little reset. It's going to be a fast gun. Uh, hopefully a lot of A's fall, A zones fall on this gun. All right. Mag falls out well, so our mag catch function test is good. Guys, we're good. Okay guys, so we've shown you today how to basically take a, uh, a Glock, one of the most inexpensive guns out there, the, one of the easiest to work on, spend just a little bit of time and a little bit of money, and you can end up with a, uh, a really nice race gun like this uh, for, for something like limited class. For most of our shooters, that's going to be exactly all they need. Uh, you can buy the $2,500 STI, I don't think it's going to make you a better shooter if, you, uh, if you're at a level where you've, you're able to out-compete with, with something like the Glock or an M&P, then maybe it's time to step up to that, to that higher-end higher gun. But uh, for most of our people out there, I think this is a, a simple demonstration of what kind of results you can expect for spending just a few hundred bucks more than what you did on the gun. So until the next time we come up with another video for you, uh, you guys go ahead and be safe. Shoot straight.